let's create an advanced item in Minecraft. Alright, we found ourselves back in Intelligent once more, and in this tutorial we're going to be adding a custom advanced item to Minecraft. Now what I call advanced items is really just an item with a custom item class. So they can be as advanced or as non-advanced as you might want it to. Now the thing that we're going to implement is an 8-ball item that when you right-click it, it just gives you a number between 0 and 9. That is all that we're doing here. However, this example will illustrate some very, very important things in the custom item classes. So for this, we're going to go into the item package, right-click new package called custom. And then inside of there, I basically always create my custom classes. So we're going to right-click again, new Java class, and this is going to be the 8-ball item class. What I highly recommend is when you have a custom item, you always end it with the word item. So basically whatever the item is and then item at the end. This just makes sure that you know this is an item. This is going to extend the item class over here from net Minecraft item. Just going to hit the tab key to autocomplete. Then we'll hover over the arrow, create constructor matching super. And now in theory, we could already use this class. However, it doesn't have any functionality to it. Now, how can we add functionality? Well, we can overwrite certain methods from the item class. If you don't know what that means, I highly suggest taking another look at the Java introduction that I've made. This is pretty much basic object-oriented programming that we're doing over here, just overriding methods from a super class. This isn't anything crazy or anything too advanced in terms of Java, and I can just once again highly recommend a little bit of Java knowledge is going to help you along immensely in the future when you want to actually mod something. So this is once again an appeal. Please do look at that. I've linked it in the top right corner and let's proceed here with the item. So what you can do is you can middle mouse button click on the item class and what you might have is this blue line. Now if in the first tutorial you properly followed everything, we should be able to choose a source that is a named source over here. So we can choose this one, say OK. And then after it reloaded a little bit, you can see the blue line is now gone and the actual item class is now properly sourced, so to speak. So we now have a good glimpse into looking in this class. And you can see there are a bunch of different methods over here. The use method, for example, that even have some Java docs. And you can even see what this means. Called when an item is used by a player. This means when you right click, you can see the use action by, by default is bound to the right mouse button. So this method is called every time when you right click with this particular item in your hand. Same with the use on block method over here called when an item is used on a block. So this is called when you right click this item onto a block. So very straightforward, all things considered. And you can see there are a bunch of methods. All of the ones that are public can basically be overridden and you can add your own custom functionality to them. So there is a lot of stuff here, as you can see. I highly recommend going through this, taking a look. Now we are going to look at the use method in this case. Like I said, the use on block method is also very interesting where you can then right click on a block. Now, how do we override this? Well, we just go into the class and we're just going to write use. And you can see it already basically suggests to us what we have here. There's also use on entity. So this would be when you right click on an entity on a mob, for example, and then you can also do some things, but we're going to choose the use method over here. So while we have this selected, press the tab key and then everything here will generate. You'll see this at override over here. This just simply means this attribute that this particular method is overridden from the item class and we're using this one instead. Now, what do we need to do inside of it? Well, what we want is we want it to output a number. So what do we need to do? Well, first of all, what I want to do is I want to only ha have this happen on the server first and foremost. So how do we do this or, and why is this even important? Well, usually most of the stuff you want to do happens on the server and then the client gets notified of it. So why would that be the case? Well, if the client, for example, could spawn in a entity, that wouldn't be that good because then, then people could just spawn their own entities and the server couldn't do anything about it because Minecraft is separated into server and client. Think about it like this. If you have, if you are the server owner of a Minecraft server, what do you not want your users to exploit? You don't want them to just be able to spawn in items that can only happen on the server, things like that. And things that happen on the client are basically things that are related to rendering and how things look like. So we can filter this by using an if statement here and then negating it with a exclamation mark in the beginning using the world parameter over here and then calling dot is client and then basically proceeding with the if statement. So everything that's inside of here, right? Everything inside of here is only going to be executed on the server and nothing on the client. 
And then what we can also do in this case, because the use method is actually called twice for each hand, what we then wanted to say is, well, we actually wanted to say hand equals hand dot main hand. So that this is only called once in this case. And now what I want to do is I want to output a random number. And then next thing, I also maybe want to add a cooldown. So those are the two things that we then want to do. I'm actually going to make two private methods for this. So I'm just going to make a get random number method. Now, this is not strictly necessary. However, this is one of those things for the, let's say, intermediate to advanced people in Java. This is a very good idea. This is a cleaner way to code this in this case. And uh, now for the beginners, it's not the most important thing, but so that you've seen this and how it can look like, because most of the time when I've seen tutorials and even and even some GitHub repositories from other mods, sometimes they are not the cleanest way of coding everything. So uh, that is, so I'm a big proponent of actually trying to code as cleanly as possible, even if it is quote unquote, just modding, but whatever the case may be, here for the get random number, we're going to return random and we're going to choose net Minecraft util math random because Minecraft actually has their own one. And we're going to say create local next int and then we're just going to return a next int and the bound is 10. So this is going to return anything from zero all the way to nine. And then we make another method, which is going to call this. This is going to be the private void output random number. And it's going to output this for a particular player entity. So this is going to be a player entity player parameter. And we're going to say player dot send message text dot literal. And then we're going to say your number is plus and then get random number. So you can see we're outputting the string your number is. And then we're adding the number from the get random number method at the end of this string. So now we can just call the output random number method, passing in the player entity over here that we have in this parameter. And then we're fine with this. We can then also set a cooldown. This works by using the player entity dot get item cooldown manager dot set with this item. And then we're just going to set it to 20 ticks, which it would be one second. And that is all that we need to do in order for us to be able to right click this particular item and then get a random number out of it. Now, of course, you can go more and or less advanced with this. Once again, what I can only tell you, number one, get some Java knowledge in you so that you can more easily understand what you can do with this. And number two, just try out some stuff. So if you are already an advanced beginner or an intermediate in terms of Java, I highly recommend just once again, middle mouse button, click on the item class and just take a look at what you can do. I highly recommend trying the use on block method, trying the use method. We also have the finish using method. And what you can also do, and this is one of the greatest things ever, once again, some Java knowledge here is extremely, extremely preferred in this case, what you can do is you can click on the item and press control H to get all of the different item classes that Minecraft adds. And you can even expand this by clicking this and then you can see all sorts of classes. So how does, for example, a nether star item work? Well, it actually isn't that crazy because it only has a glint. Okay, fair enough. Is there anything that is crazier than an, than a nether star item. Well, how about a snowball, for example? Well, there's a snowball, right? We're spawning an entity over here. You can see this is also happening only on the server and not on the client, which I just told you about. We have things like the shears. How do those work? Well, the shears work with the use on block method in this case. Now, interestingly enough, why isn't there a use on entity here? Well, this actually happens differently with the shears, but we'll not get into this. Let's just take another look at this. You can see there's all sorts of things that you can take a look at. Elytra item, honey bottle item, right? Don't go too crazy with this as well, right? Don't say, oh, I'm just going to go into a bow item and make a custom bow. Look, this is a little more complicated than you might expect, right? So this is why I keep saying that you need some Java knowledge for this. Otherwise, you will have an incredibly hard time implementing anything of substance, let's say. Whatever the case may be, we now have a custom item class. Now you will note that both the constructor as well as the name of the class are also grayed out. So both of them are sort of in this gray over here. And that means that the classes have not been used. Of course, we still need to register the item in our mod items class. So for this, what we can do is we can once again just duplicate the Tanzanite over here. I'm just going to call this the eight ball. And then of course, changing the name here as well, eight underscore ball. 
Now, this is incredibly important. We still have a gray name over here. This means that this class has not been used because here we're creating a new item. Make sure that we're creating a new eight ball item over here. And then this will turn yellow and this will turn white. And then you know ah, this class is being used somewhere. We're actually creating an instance of this class. What I also want to do is I want to add a max count to this and that's going to be one. So we can stack the eight balls to 64, but only one eight ball can be in one slot in your inventory. Now for the eight ball, just as well for any other item, we still need to add translation and of course also need to add the item model JSON file. So this is going to be the eight ball and then an item model JSON file. I'm just going to copy this one, the Tanzanite one, eight underscore ball. And then we're just going to change the ENG it looks to to eight underscore ball. Now let's just copy this one over as well. All of this is of course available to you in the description below. GitHub repository an individual just as well, just as always. And that is all that we need to do in order to add this eight ball item to the game. So now let's go into Minecraft and see if it works. All right, so we find ourselves in Minecraft and there you go. The eight ball has been added. So now let's take it in my hand and I'm going to right click it. And there you go. Number is two, number is two, number is five. There we go. And I can keep right clicking it. And you can see we always have a second cooldown over there. So this is also how you can very easily add a cooldown to, well, basically any item. So I can keep right clicking, but you can see the number only prints out after the cooldown is already done. Now I can also hold it down and that also works. So that is pretty cool, all things considered. Now, it will not work actually in the offhand because we're checking only for the main hand. So this is also very important. This is why I did it, right? So that we have the hand equals main hand. So it only works if you have it in the right hand, basically. But that is how easy it can be to add a custom advanced item to Minecraft. Right, and that concludes this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new and I'll see you all in the next tutorial. Oh, so, yeah.